Hello, hello, hello. This is AJT500 slash Talented Track 98 slash Heloise Wonderwise slash Hilo. And uh, asking you shall receive. Uh, my boy uh, Luca, he asked in the uh, 000 video that he wanted to see me rank the illustrious weapons. And he got a lot of likes on his comments. And my reply got a lot of likes. And then I got another comment today that said they would like to see that. So. It seems like that's a really requested video, so uh, I'll go through this. Now, just to lay some ground rules, I only have Hunting, Andromeda, and Ura on my account, and those are the only three I've ever played with. So besides that, it is mostly going off of um, the information that's available to me on the wiki, so what I can see there, um, videos I've seen, and hearsay about random things depending on the weapon. Um, from other people because I don't have the other weapons so it will be loosely spread but I did try and do as much research on these weapons as possible um, to give you as much information as possible to try and give them all a, a decent rating right um, and you guys know the type of videos I do they're very long <laughs> so I'll try and give you as much information on each one of them as possible um, but I just want to get that disclaimer out of the way first because like I said I don't have all of them so I can't give you a 100% a um, you know good testimony based on personal experience because I don't have all of them yet so that being said um, we're gonna go through we're gonna rank them um, as per usual I have my notepad here also since we're here thank you to uh, mr. Nar narco tune in my crew discord and Keiko in my my previous crew discord um, for helping me with information about the fire weapons trace Felger and uh, Mercy Lago um, because some 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 things I had questions on since I don't have those weapons um, and I want some second opinions on those um, so thank you to those two, um, as well as anybody else who's ever provided a video or answered a question about any other, uh, gold moon weapon I've had in the past. Um, so we're going to get into this. Um, I'm just going to go, you already see all my tabs up here. <laughs> we're going to go in order of, um, how they just have them listed out on the wiki. So it's, it's just like this. So I'm starting with blazing mistral and we'll end with Zosimos. Um, so that's pretty much how it's going to go. Um, and I'm just going to go through my notepad. Um, I made this the, the best way I could think to make this type of video was to go through like a pros and con list. And then I also, um, with a lot of them, I actually started to make this additional point with, um, a pro and a con. And what that means is they have, they have something that's not necessarily purely a pro or purely a con, but it's kind of like a mix of both. So like, it'll have something like you gain, you know, 500 hits of skill damage, but you can never charge attack or something like that. Right. So it, there's a pro to it, but there's also a con to whatever the ability is. And a lot of them actually have that. So <laughs> that, that listing that I came up with early on actually helped me quite a bit, um, for kind of, uh, breaking apart the information, I guess to say. Um, and then at the end, I've left the ranking for, um, blanked out for right now because I, I have a general idea of where all of them will go. Um, but you know, I want to leave that kind of as, as a surprise for the ending of their sections. Right. So, um, but that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. We'll start with blazing mistral. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of good. The way I made these is I kind of went down, down from the top to the bottom to kind of cover the stuff and then stuff that was like pro and con. I kind of left that, you know, later. Right. So for blazing mistral, the first, the first section of the pros, um, the first big pro is the, the two turn cut to skill cooldowns, um, for the MC on Ogi, right? This is pretty good. I've noticed, um, from using specifically like Yatima and Hexa that I'm a big fan of reducing cooldowns on people just in general. It's, it's really nice. Um, so being able to reduce two, two turns to MC's skill cooldowns is really good. Um, yeah, that's, that's just really nice. <laughs> um, and then also the, the next pro is, um, skill one. And also this, there's a lot of information here. So if I seem like I'm kind of reading my notes, I kind of am, <laughs> um, but yeah, so skill, skill one works regardless of skill typing and has a dispel plus damage. Um, so this, the, the what I mean by skill typing is, um, 
a lot of you, you people know from the Uriel rant, um, this also comes up with um, someone like Christmas Illinois, where their stuff is re restricted specifically to red skills. Um, this is not restricted to red skills. This is also not restricted to MC in particular. This is restricted. This is free to anyone. Any fire ally uses a skill, you get access to this ability, which is good. And it also has a dispel effect if they have a buff, which is also nice. Um, but unfortunately, that's kind of where the pros end. <laughs> um, so now let's go into the cons for this weapon. Um, so the first con is that there's there's an, a decent amount of spear classes, but there's not um, they're not like the highest of the high. They're not like the best of the best that you always use in every single situation. Um, you have you have some um, classes like Spartan, which have become really good for burst setups now with their extra buffs. Um, you have you also have um, another job like um, Iatro Mantis. Um, that is really good as well to use with the spear, but those those jobs are not like the best of the best um, So while they are good and they do have their uses this weapon becomes more restrictive when you don't necessarily want to use those jobs um, Which are not always the best for certain situations um, The next the next con is that the second skill relies on uh, dispelling which gates the damage healing charge gain um on that skill so right here this skill you have to dispel a buff in order to get all this stuff right on this skill so if you don't dispel a buff this skill is completely useless this the skill does nothing so whether or not the the um the boss even gets buffs that are dispellable means this the likelihood of this is is a lot less useful <laughs> and it's not like this skill is like so drastically good that it's like okay it kind of warrants that it's only restricted to dispelling buffs like it's just a decent skill that is also really restrictive right um so now let's go to the um the addition which is the pro and the con um this was brought to me by keiko um triple zero or zero zero zero's instant charge ca ca reactivation does help to cut mc cooldowns very fast but the con to this is that you need an unsparkable unticksable summon <laughs> in order to do that which is something that is not just provided by the weapon itself you need a, a whole other summon which is extremely can be extremely hard to get in the first place in order to use that and then you actually need to use that summon in order to get these um skill reductions right um the other pro and a con is the boosting of the enemies um double attack and triple attack which is right here on ogi is good for playing into the dispelling passives which is is this and then also being able to dispel a buff just in general um but this only these only last um two two and a half turns and you may not actually even dispel in these these two and a half turns which means you could just be buffing the boss for no reason you'd get no gain from it besides just buffing the boss <laughs> because <laughs> they're just getting charged diamonds or sorry they're not just getting charged diamonds. they're just getting extra hits on you they're just getting extra hits on you because you're buffing them but you may not even get this benefit if you don't dispel in that time frame um which is kind of eh <laughs> so yeah um you don't it, it's kind of iffy on this it's kind of iffy on this and it's kind of iffy on this second skill um so that's pretty much all of I have on blazing mistral so all of that together we're gonna go back to the the tier list now all of that together in my opinion puts blazing mistral at a pretty solid C C tier in my opinion um, it's not really even middle of the pack in my opinion I think it has a lot of cons and a lot of issues with how it works um, and getting you utilizing all the skills that's available to it um, so it's not it's not at the bottom it's not completely restrictive and it does have some good classes that you can use it with um but it, it's nothing to really write home about and it's i don't know if it's really justified 150 gold moons to be honest um so i think that's about it for blazing mistral okay with blazing mistral being out of the way um i will go ahead and give that its c ranking um let's go ahead and get into the next weapon which is trace felger um so i will pull that up next 
Now, um, with Raze Velger, the main pros to this weapon are um, that it's a it's a massive stat stick. It comes with nor 30 percent normal attack damage amp 100k supplemental damage and 10 percent damage cap it also has permanent flurry on uh skill one and it has the ability to massively burst in a short amount of turns with relic buster or soldier i'm sure at this point everyone has probably seen some type of price velk or nonsense whether it be extremely fast falados during um during guild war or just burst during guild war um you've seen you've seen stuff like fall um belial and bubs be killed in one two three turns um you've seen you've seen mugen get completely demolished by this weapon um you've seen it be used for gold bar farming you've seen it be used for um executes on super ultimate bahamut you've seen it been used for bursting on super ultimate bahamut it just has ridiculous burst potential um just in general with relic buster and soldier um both of those jobs also have the ability to just attack a lot in one turn which just you know really utilizes all its buffs um it's kind of like my <laughs> my videos in the past have kind of compounded on top of each other because if you've seen past videos you've seen me talk about the importance of um amplification damage uh supplemental damage uh damage cap just in general um even kind of when i talk about all and on with with flurry and some of the fire videos um it just has a massive stat stick on this weapon which plays very well into the jobs that it uses to be able to burst extremely well and effectively um which is just a massive a massive pro like i said i'm sure everyone at this point has seen some type of nonsense with this weapon where it can just burst extremely well um so that that's that's mostly it for the pros it is an extremely extremely potent and strong burst weapon um now to go into the cons um the first one is the lack of gun jobs although the gun jobs that it does have access to pretty much do all you need it to do um the the only real gun jobs that are really prevalent for this weapon are things like king um bandit tycoon um relic buster and soldier like i said before um but if you think about it most of those jobs especially considering this weapon can kill a lot of bosses extremely quickly without really needing to to full auto or worry about the boss's mechanics pretty much cover everything you need to do um which is extremely good um the next thing is that um black lackluster ogi effects um doesn't matter as much for this weapon since it's built for um bursting in the first place um but the the ogi effects are kind of whatever um it, it's just kind of whatever uh, which like i said again this weapon is mostly built for auto attack based bursting and it already has massive stat sticks so the ogi falling behind doesn't really matter um too much um the second skill one thing about this though is the second skill is not useless um this second skill and i did get confirmation on this this second skill is it's it's a high amount of damage 80 percent bonus water damage effect is really good but it is specifically only to single attacks um which is not what you're going to be playing with <laughs> for the vast majority of stuff you're not going to be planning to do single attacks and i think that th what this is um built around is probably this 100 hit to multi-attack rate where their their thought process was probably well their thought process was probably this weapon's already freaking strong we got to give it something dead but <laughs> um it was probably built around the fact that you aren't really supposed to multi-attack with it so you would just be getting this bonus damage attack when you single attack because you can only you know normally usually like single attack right um because of the massive hit to multi-attack damage so this in most things you're using you're going to be multi-attacking anyway you're going to force that multi-attack some way so this is not um really a good skill this this skill is probably 98 percent um useless <laughs> right um so okay next thing um let's see um okay has to farm and upkeep bullets that's a big thing about this you have to farm all the random bullet 
mats for all these bullets to fit in um, you also have to farm things like um, if you want to be completely optimal you're gonna want bubs and belial bullets to cover all your bases um, you're gonna want like the super ultimate Bahamut bullet um, I also have upkeep future bullets because I do not for a second believe that there will not introduce things for like hexa in the future or um, super ultimate fall in the future there will probably be bullets for that there will also probably be bullets for just other fights in general um, in the future even if they aren't like the super hard ones um, even if they're just like free quests there will probably be other bullets in the future to use for this weapon um, I already talked about Ogi effects are a bit meh um, and then the last the last big con for this weapon is that this weapon's biggest weakness in my opinion is content that cannot be killed in its burst windows so what i mean by that is Trace velger's biggest weakness is fights that have either too much hp for it to possibly burst in a reasonable amount of time or fights where you have you have to do the mechanic that it it poses a very good example for this is hexa um and i know a lot of people were thinking about this when hexa was first about to come out um as opposed to super ultimate bahamut because super ultimate bahamut by the end of that most people were just bursting it with um well not most people but a lot of people could just burst that with trace velger or like light relic buster stuff like that um, because that boss did not have enough hp to contend with the amount of damage that these weapons could do but hexa uh, upped the HP even more Not only is there more HP in a fight like Hexa, but there's also stuff like the pearls where you cannot Easily deal with those in the amount of time with Trace Velger So there are better options to use than Trace Velger in a fight like that um, So that in my opinion is the biggest weakness of Trace Velger is when something Either has too much HP for you or a group of people, you know six people to burst with Trace Velger burst or um it forces mechanics that race velger cannot easily deal with um those are the biggest weaknesses now for the addition the uh the pro and a con um while the third skill is good there is no burstable um third mod on this weapon so what i mean by this is if you look at this weapon as opposed to where we had blazing mistral blazing mistral has this boostable effect on it for the third skill race velger does not have a third third boost um this matters less for race velger because it is already so much of a stat stick in like just in and of itself with all its different passives and even its third skill is just you know feeding into that stat stick component um so it matters less but it is just something to to think about um just in general something to note um, also, this weapon does not need a PNS or normal attack damage amplification from outside sources until potentially overcap changes. What that means is because it already caps supplemental damage at 100k, supplemental damage from your grid is capped at 100k, and um, amplification damage is capped at, at 30% until we get um, overcap changes that may or may not affect these numbers. Um, this weapon does not need those other weapons which is a pro because you don't necessarily need to worry about having pns if you're only using this weapon or you do not need to worry about per se using things like the uh, world amplification weapons with this weapon because it already takes care of those things but the con to that is also the fact that you do not get any bonuses from those weapons so for example um uh, PNS also gives voltage and it also gives um, damage cap on it. You do not get access to those things if you do not use those with these weapons. Well, or with this weapon, sorry. Um, same thing with the World Harp where the World ha Harp gives extra... Um, it, it gives extra cap and it also gives um, extra EX might and HP that you do not get access to with this weapon. Which can make grid building with this weapon a bit weirder than other elements because a lot of other elements will just see those those weapons like the world harps like pns and immediately go for them because they are just such good stat boosts but because race velker has all those stat boosts in one weapon um it needs to fill out its grid somehow which means you may pick up weirder weapon weirder weapon combinations in your grid as opposed to other elements 
Um, so yeah, that that's what I mean when I when I say that it's a pro because you don't need other weapons, but you do need other weapons to fill out your grid, which means you may have to pick weirder things for that. All of that being said, <laughs> Reichsfelger is an easy easy S tier weapon. This weapon is pretty ridiculous in 90 probably 99.9% .9 of content this weapon is is extremely good the birth potential on this is ridiculous it can kill almost everything extremely quickly um it's very good weapon once you get everything um for this weapon and you have all the characters the bullets the grids it's extremely powerful extremely powerful weapon um, and it also has some potential to go up even more in the future as more and more bullets get introduced because that can just be a boost to the weapon in general. Easy S tier weapon. Um, so yeah, that's it for Harris Felger. Okay, so that's Harris Felger. So let's go ahead and give that its, its S ranking and then next we'll go to Andromeda. So I'll pull up Andromeda here and I can kind of talk about this one more because I actually have this weapon. Um, so. The first thing for pros, healing on Ogi is nice, um, especially because this this weapon can Ogi th three times in a turn. You can get a lot of healing in one turn, which is really good. Um, also, this gives undispellable to all Earth allies, which is also very nice to have. Um, the buffs on this weapon in general are pretty decent. Um, the the Milkometa, uh, however you say that gives these these buffs down here which is also four buffs which is something to keep in mind for later um we'll come back to that um it also gives this 10 percent uplift at the um you know that that triggers at the end of turn but you know it gives it when you ogies and then it also gives this this damage um damage cap stackable which is nice so the the buffs that it gives are pretty decent um, and there's a decent amount of them, which, like I said, I'll come back to later. Um, relatively easy requirements for double oaking. The only thing that you need to ogie twice is just 100% charge bar because charge bars just charge attacks just activate twice um, by default. And um, well, by default in the terms of if you have 10 buffs, which is kind of a con, but um, you know. It's not too bad, especially considering these give um, four, five, six buffs, right? So you only need four more from something else to activate this. So it's relatively easy to charge attack twice. Now, um, that's the pros. <laughs> now let's talk about the cons. Okay, so first big con is um, lack of super stellar harp classes. The only two that you're really going to be using are Lumberjack and mostly Rising Force. Um, mostly Rising Force because Rising Force is a charge attack based um, job and this is a charge attack based weapon. So it makes sense. Um, so there's not a ton of variety in these jobs or the playstyles in them uh, when it comes to Andromeda. Um, but the big issue, the big issue, the really big issue with Andromeda is this right here, the 101% to 199% charge bar issue. Now, uh, I talked about this uh, way back when I first got this weapon in hunting in a video that I did about comparing those two weapons. Um, but I will give you the rundown here so you don't have to go back and look for that or anything. Um, what this means is when you use a job like rising force right rising force has the ability to go above 100 percent uh charge attack um gauge right but the thing with the andromeda that does not work like a lot of other classes and jobs that can go above 100 percent charge bar is that when when andromeda charge attacks twice if it is not at exactly 100% charge attack, so if, if it is at 101 to 199 charge bar, it will charge attack twice using the initial 100% charge bar that you have, but then every other piece of charge bar up to 199, so the extra nine, like one to 99 charge bar is completely voided. 
it's completely voided when you do that second charge attack which means you go down to zero so you either need to be at exactly 100% charge bar to do two charge attacks or you need to be at exactly 200% charge bar um, to do three charge attacks. The only exception to this is if you can have something like double strike from Christmas Anthuria that can allow you to gain charge bar during the turn to get to that last that last um, that last charge attack during the turn. Otherwise, all of your charge attack, charge charge bar from 101% to 199% is completely voided when you charge attack, um, which is really bad. <laughs> That's really bad because Andromeda does not have a way outside of, like I said, double strike with Christmas Anthuria. It does not have a way to boost its charge bar during the turn or during the Ogi because the only charge bar gain it gets is uplift, which takes action at the end of the turn um so you you end up the the issue with this is that you end up lagging behind when it comes to charge charge attack count as opposed to something like um just using kanashige with kingo because you are voiding you are constantly voiding your charge bar if you're using something like rising force because you're you're dipping you're getting charge bar you're getting extra charge bar which is good and you're going over 100 percent but then you're immediately voiding that when you charge attack without being at 200 percent um if that makes sense so that's the big the big issue um with that and then like i said furthermore harder to build charge bar during turns due to only having uplift which will take effect at the end of the turn um, instead of having anything to do with charge bar during the turn, which is, you know, I just went over my note without reading. I already knew. <laughs> I already knew that it was already in my head. Um, so all of this combined is it makes it hard to Ogi every single turn, which, like I said, will reduce your overall Ogi count if you do not have extra assistance in the party um, for helping you Ogi because you will you will constantly be voiding a lot of your extra charge bar that you could be using for the next turn to guarantee ogi every single turn um which is rough <laughs> which is very very rough um in addition to this um the pro and the con um like i said before you need 10 buffs to ogi twice and get the damage cap buff um this isn't huge but it is something to be aware of if you want to be able to ogi twice like for example on turn one you need to use something like um a frayer key or you have to buff in some way in order to do this um you can't just do it right off of the, right off the bat um you also consistently need 10 buffs in order to do it which isn't too bad in something like full auto or if you're playing manually but it is something to be aware of um and like i said not too bad because of the buffs that it gives which is six um but they're still needed in the first place which is a con so that is pretty much it for andromeda the biggest issue like i said in my opinion is just the voiding of the charge bar it makes it really annoying to be able to charge bar charge attack multiple times in a row because you do not have the ability to just keep that charge bar on something like rising force which is the main job that you'll probably be using in the first place when it comes to this weapon um all of that being said we will put andromeda in a solid b tier in my opinion i do not think it is as restrictive as something like blazing mistral it does still have its uses um there's still a lot of setups well a lot is kind of an exaggeration there are a decent amount of setups that use andromeda and andromeda is kind of the best option in those setups um for things like um bubs full auto um you know diaspora setting up your 100 percent um y gauge at the start um you know there are some setups like in hexa that use um use this weapon for example um that you may not use kengo for and you know instead it has its uses it has its uses um but it does have its issues as well um which in my opinion puts it pretty middle of the pack um it's something you may want to consider down the road if you are an earth main but it's not super high priority um so i think that's it for andromeda okay now andromeda's finished um let us move on to the next weapon. I'll give it its B tier. 
the next weapon. Murcielago. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Murcielago. Now, Murcielago, it's pros. Um, the Ogi is honestly not too bad. Um, Drain is just a nice buff to have in general. Um, and it lasts, it lasts two and a half turns. Um, the delay is also nice. Um, one thing I need to note about this delay, though, I do have if it works. Um, delay drain is a spe specific, <laughs> Jesus, a specific type of delay um, that is only available to like this weapon. And I have it up here, a, a um, certain amount of characters, um, you know, and summons stuff like that is specific it only um one thing to have here is that it kind of hits more often than a normal delay but there are still some harder things that um that this won't work on um regardless they are just completely de delay immune right um uh, i'm kind of getting ahead of myself this kind of needs to go in the pro and pro plus con section but i i wanted to mention that um so um the Ogi in general is not bad. The Ogi is not bad. It also gives this charge um, 30%, which is good because it kind of plays into this thing's kit because this thing really wants the cheeky Ogi. It really wants the Ogi. Um, so yeah, right here. Um, the drain, yeah. The drain, drain, the Ogi and everything plays into the... Um, oh, okay. So the, the drain, the drain with S1. So um, right here. The, when you get this drain, you get access to this S1, which also gives you CA supplemental damage and um, more charge bar, which will then play back into you oging more, which means you can get the drain again, which will play back more into this. So it gives you like a looping effect here, right? Um, which is good. And um, the delay drain also dispels and leaves a permanent debuff on the boss. So when anybody dispel, when, when any delay drain is activated. So this is another reason why I need to specify the delay drain thing. Because it's only this weapon and these wind characters that can have that specific delay drain to activate this second skill. Um, but the second skill, when it does work, does give you... Um, a dispel and it gives you a random permanent debuff um, right here which are all stackable which is good that's that's also very good now um, I think that's it for my pros now for the cons <laughs> okay the cons extreme extreme lack of bow classes extreme lack of bow classes the only bow classes I can really think that you would use this on are Robin Hood and um robin hood and uh kengo those are the only two and this this seems more specific for kengo because it's built so much around ogi but the thing about it is this weapon like i have a note here seems much more difficult to pilot as opposed to just using a kanashige <laughs> It seems much more difficult to pilot as opposed to just using a Kanashige. And I don't know if the benefits that are gained from this weapon are worth over just using a Kanashige. Not even to mention that it may fall behind in terms of Ogi count as opposed to using a Kanashige. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's It really wants to play on Kanashige, but Kanashige already has a free-to-play weapon that uh kind of does not necessarily its job better because they do two different things but it just kind of is easier to use um and lastly there's just nothing necessarily stand out about this to warrant 150 gold moons in my opinion yes this plays back into each other but this isn't like the best the best thing in the world <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's like okay this plays back into this but besides this boosting your ca damage this doesn't really even do anything um the drain is nice but you can get heals from other places the delay is nice but if there's no charge bar or if there's no there's no charge diamonds 
this is kind of whatever and then this just builds back into Ogi, which is like okay but the Ogi doesn't really do anything at the first place um so it's kind of like yeah, it's okay and and um this skill is is nice but you can again you can get dispels you can get um debuffs from other places and the the plane damage is just kind of like okay <laughs> all right that's nice um so yeah there's nothing stand out on this weapon to warrant the 150 gold moon costs in my opinion now the big section in in here because i do think this weapon does have some potential but there's a lot of pro and con nonsense going on with this weapon so uh, the first thing, both skills are generally locked behind the Ogi, which means not only do you need to Ogi and then take a turn to utilize the drain of the first skill. So what does that mean? Um, when you Ogi, you, you obviously all your other characters will, will kind of get this, right? Oh, they, they'll get this, but your MC needs to take another turn before they can actually drain to, to, to do this, right? <laughs> So <laughs> you're going to need to take at least an extra turn and that extra turn requires you to Ogi beforehand um, before you can, you know, really utilize that. But like I said before, you also need charge diamonds when Oging to even utilize the second skill in the first place. This needs a delay drain of a charge diamond. It needs to be successful in order for this to be even somewhat useful. Um, in the first place, right? For you to even use this. Um, so if you cannot drain or if the boss just does not have a delay when you use this or when you another character uses a delay drain, then you just lose complete access to the skill, um, which is not really good. Um, I also talked about before delay drain is a specific type of delay and the effects do not work if using a normal delay. So, you know, if someone just has a normal delay that is not specifically delay drain, you will not get this. You will not get this other stuff. You will not get this. You will not get uh, this, right? Well, I guess this is only on MC, but you will not get this, right? So that's not very good either. Um, let's see. Um, oh, okay. And like I said, on the, the flip side to this is that the, the delay drain does have a higher success rate than a normal delay, but it is still restricted by characters, this weapon, and some bosses will just be completely immune regardless. Um, so yeah, some just have complete immunities regardless. Um, also the last, the last thing here is that the six hit plane damage on skill two, um, this right here is nice. Um, but it is plane damage and not specifically wind damage. So this isn't going to be boosted by anything. Um, it's just going to be that 400 and you know, it's going to be this number regardless. You're not going to be able to get more skill damage out of this by boosting it because it's plane damage and not wind damage. Um, which is an issue in my opinion. Um, so yeah, that's, that's not very good. This is also based on their current HP, which probably won't play into too, too much of stuff. Um, but it is something to note that as people like, as the enemy's HP goes down, this will do less damage because they have less HP, right? So that doesn't really matter that much, but it is something to note. Um, but yeah, so with all of that being said, Mercy Lago, unfortunately, is a D tier for me. Um, Mercy Lago, I think, does have potential. Um, and I have heard that it is fun to mess around with, but it just has way too many restrictions. It has way too many restrictions on being able to utilize its skills. Um, whether it be the jobs that it can use, um, the proficiency in general, bow is just not a very good proficiency. Um, and just the restrictions with delay drain, which is a specific type of delay and just needing the charge diamonds in the first place and using the drain on your MC, well, your characters in general to activate the S1. Um, it just has a lot of restrictions. It has a lot of restrictions, which makes it extremely hard to use um, without a ton of big benefits for all those restrictions. So in my opinion, this this weapon is a D tier, in my opinion. Um, but I think that's it for Murcielago. 
Okay, with Marcialago being uh, out of the way, we are moving right along. Um, I will give it its D tier ranking. Now, <laughs> the next one. The next one is Fu Fu Futs. Futsunomitama? <laughs> Futsunomitama. I think it's how you say that. Uh, Futsunomitama. Futsunomitama. Uh, oh, Futsu. Okay, that's what I'm going to call it. Futsu. The Light Dagger. So we're moving on to this one, right? And this weapon, this weapon actually caught me kind of off guard because this weapon um, was kind of bare bones. <laughs> and there were a lot of pro and con uh, type things, but we'll get into that. So starting off, <laughs> the one, the one pro I can see to this weapon is that it raises Thunderstruck on Ogi. <laughs> the, the one purely pro I can see on this weapon is that it raises Thunderstruck on Ogi by two. Which is good because it does play into the weapon, you know, wanting to use Thunderstruck. But that is the single pro, purely pro, I can see on this weapon. Um, funnily enough, cons, I have multiple question marks for. Because <laughs> there are not many pros that are specifically pros. But I do not see any specific cons to it either. Um, because there's not really a lot of cons that do not have trade-offs to them. Um... There's nothing that's just blatantly like you just lose out on something by using this weapon. Um, so yeah, that that's its pros and cons. So you know, jokes aside, let's get into you know how the weapon works and the main meat of it with the pro the addition. And this this is the, one of the reasons why I said this this section was really useful for me. Um, so the addition pro and con for this. The first thing. Ogi gives 15% bonus light damage, which is good. And normally this would be a pro. This would be a pro. The issue with this though, is that this is the exact same amount and the exact same buff that Noah's dagger gives. Ivory arc here, right? It's the exact same thing. And I think, yeah, they last for the exact same amount of turns. This weapon also is just a very used weapon in light right now right it's a very used weapon in light right now which makes this more of a con because you're already getting this from this weapon so you're kind of there, there's not like it's not like this weapon gives you 50 percent bonus light damage so it's like okay you want to use this weapon over ivory arc because you know at least you're getting the foot the the 50 bonus light damage even if you ignore everything else you're just getting more echo right but it it's the exact same so it's it's a pro because yes this is good but it's a con because most people that use light primal are already using this weapon anyway um so that's the first pro and a con um the second pro and a con skill one is decent damage and raises thunderstruck level by two but only works when mc uses skill one which may be a skill with a long cooldown something you don't want to use at all or something you don't want to use right away at all times so what i mean by this is this this skill right here um it only works when mc specifically uses their their first slot skill which like i said before is something that you may may have a long cooldown something you may not always want to use or um something you may not want to use specifically on cooldown just to get this this effect right going on um, further from that this plays mostly into tormentor because tormentor can use its skill one multiple times but tormentor not only is a job that is not always used even in high level play it's not always the best option anymore like it used to be um but you also have to farm for the the um the uh items that tormentor uses uh, and they're not they're not like bullets where they're just permanent once you farm them you just have them you have to continuously get them which a lot of people including myself do not really want to do <laughs> so that makes it a, a 
good pro because this is a good skill the damage is good and the thunderstruck level is good but the skill specifically slot one skill requirement is not very good in my opinion um let's see skill two is also decent damage but you need at least uh level seven thunderstruck which is not a ridiculously prolific debuff which what i mean by that is um not a lot of characters give thunderstruck the only one i can really think of off the top of my head are summer monica and uh albert and light I, I think there's another one or maybe two but those are the only two i can even think of and both of those characters i think summer money is good just because i i like money but <laughs> um you know both of those characters are not super used in light nowadays so you are kind of relying on just yourself to get this thunderstruck level up um for the most part in light um and because it's seven thunderstruck this can be hard to get up extremely quickly and you probably won't be able to get it up turn one to be able to utilize this for anything otk or quick burst related um which is also not extremely good um this instant charging and double oging with zero 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 uh, i brought this up with blazing mistral from before with um what keiko had told me and i thought about it for this weapon and i think it would be good for this weapon too um but it's the same thing with blazing mistral where again that requires an unsparkable unticksable summon to be able to even do that strategy in the first place which is a you know it's a pro because obviously you can get this faster but it's a con because like i said you need an unsparkable unticksable summon <laughs> to use that and you need to be using that summons call in the first place to even utilize this um which is also a big con um and lastly there's just nothing stand out in my opinion about this weapon to justify the cost um like i said before for like blazing mistral and stuff like that um yes the skill damage is nice on on these the thunderstruck is nice the bonus light damage is nice but there's nothing here that's like yes i need to get this weapon because this weapon is is wonderful for uh you know x content yes it might be nice to have and yes you may have you know extra damage over using something like an ivory arc like if you were to use tormentor in a fight um ivory arc may fall behind in damage as opposed to this but you can very easily just get by with an ivory arc <laughs> there's nothing on this weapon that's like yes i need to have this weapon um when i use a dagger class um so yeah there's nothing stand out in my opinion worth 150 gold moons so all that being said um originally when i first thought about making this list this weapon was going to be a b tier but when I actually sat down and and saw it, I think it's actually more of a C tier. And I would actually, I by the way, this since this is the first weapon that is on um, the same ranking as another weapon, um, I am going to try and tier this from left to right. Um, I'm actually going to put it behind Blazing Mistral, which may be surprising, but I do think the fact that just it doesn't really it doesn't really open anything else new to light it's not very in my opinion worth 150 gold moon weapons or gold moon gold moons <laughs> because there's nothing really stand out about it and because ivory arc exists in the exact same element and does already does some of the exact same things with the uh 15 bonus damage i actually think it's behind blazing mistral because it just it it doesn't really do anything you know stand out ish um so yeah i i think it actually ends up in c tier behind blazing mistral in my opinion um that's just my opinion some people may think differently but that's just how i feel about it um so uh i think that's all for uh futsu okay now with futsu out of the way um let's go ahead and give that its c ranking moving on to arashkugol okay arashkugol so, Arashkugol, let's go through its pros. Um, first of all, there are a pretty good amount of axe classes that are also useful. Um, Lumberjack and Berserker are two really big ones. There's also um, uh, Viking, which is, is really good. All three of those classes are really nice. Um, 
the next thing, Ogi gives all allies except MC double strike for the rest of the turn. Um, you know, when MC Ogies, this is extremely strong. Um, double strike in general as a buff is really freaking strong. Um, it, it's just nice. <laughs> Being able to hit more than once is really nice. Um, MC gets guaranteed triples for 1.5 turns. Guaranteed triples, very good. Very good. Being able to guarantee triple attack is very nice, and they will be able to get this for the next turn as well after they Ogi, which is really good because of the 1.5 turns. Very nice. Very nice. Um, next thing, a Reshkugel like um, Price Felker is also a very massive stat stick. Um, it does not have as many um stat bonuses of her as race Velker, but it does have a little bit of you know extra nuance to it so it does have the exact same uh 30 normal attack damage cap um it does have normal attack damage nor sorry this was this was i know i was saying something wrong 30 this 30 normal attack damage amp then it has 20 percent normal attack damage cap um which is it, both of these are nice um, it also starts with 100% charge bar from this this bonus down here, and um, tell tell Ibrahim <laughs> tell Ibrahim uh, allows for instant charge for two extra follow up turns. So essentially, you get three to total turns of instant charge, which means you can do this double strike thing three times, um, which is good. It's good being able to. I, I already said double striking for all your other allies is really good, and being able to do that for three turns in a row is really freaking good. Um, that's really nice. Very good burst weapon. Um, and I, I'm sure, just like uh, Race Velker, a lot of people either already have this weapon or have seen nonsense with this weapon where you can just keep, you know, doing double strike shenanigans with everybody. Very good. Very good. Um, next. Okay, so the cons, the cons for this weapon, 30% hit to charge bar gain. Um, this is actually kind of big um, because this weapon starts to fall off in things that live longer than three turns because this is a very hefty hit to your charge bar gain. So outside of the initial three turns where you get these bonuses here to do 100% you know charge bar right off the bat instant charge bar um you need some type of outside interference some type of outside intervention to consistently do your ogi which is besides it being a stat stick is kind of your your biggest draw to this weapon which is your ogi um so you can give everyone this double strike and so the mc can get guaranteed triple attack too um you need some type of uh, outside intervention, so something like um, triple zero, or um, just a a boost on MC, like a buff on MC to give you 100% charge bar, another character to give you 100% charge bar, something like that. Um, you know, this this is actually kind of big because it 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 kind of has the same issue with Race Velger, where anything that Eresh cannot kill in in three turns is you're gonna see a lot of diminishing returns on on that granted you can you know buff yourself up again but you're gonna have some issues there because you're not gonna have access to this this strong buff anymore um let's see um 40 percent hit to skill damage cap um i've heard this is negligible um so this this right here i've heard this is ne negligible probably because of um the skill boost um, weapons that you already have in um, dark but it is here in general it is a hit so it is still a con um, just because it does exist um, now on for um, the addition the pro and the con while the third skill is good there is no burstable third mod on this weapon um, what I mean by that like I said for I think it was yeah race Felger um, there's no third mod on this this weapon so uh, again just in case you skip to this this part because i always have timestamps. um for a, a weapon like futsu it has this boostable mod here um arrest google does not have that and i would even say furthermore um as opposed to something like um race felger where its third thing is 
partially this stat stick. A Rashkagol, even though this is good after three turns, this skill is completely useless. This does nothing after three turns um, because this is just completely useless. It doesn't do anything. Um, so that is a minor con um, to this weapon as well. Um, let's see. Um, doesn't need normal attack damage amplification or normal attack damage cap because of you know these two skills these already max it out um, which again um, isn't huge because obviously it's a good stat stick but it does make grid building a bit uh, stranger I will say it's not as big of a deal on dark as it probably is for something like um, water not that it's like a super big deal in water either but um, with dark you do need to play your grid potentially a bit differently than some other Ellie's because you cannot pick up every single weapon that other Ellie's do that do not have this boosive th this boosive <laughs> this massive boost um, to stats this stat stick of a weapon um, other Ellie's don't have this so other Ellie's will go for things like the world harp or just um you know, having normal normal attack damage cap on your um, Opus or Ultima. You don't need that on this weapon um, because you already have the max, at least until the overcap changes uh, come and potentially change this this cap, right? Um, you don't need that, um, which is good because you don't need that, but then it's also like, okay, what do I do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Which I guess in, in a way you can kind of counterbalance that because at least you can counterbalance this because you can almost always use a skill damage cap, um, you know, ultima or opus key because you don't need the normal attack one. So that there's kind of some give and take, but again, that's the reason why I have this pro and a con section. Um, you know, let's let's see. Uh, I already said which which are the pro because you may need to worry less about weapons to give those benefits. Yes, um, and then again, okay. So like I said before, um, you may lose out on potential bonuses from those weapons. Um, something like I said before, with like a world harp, um, you may lose out on like the extra uh, might or HP that come from other weapons like that or other weapons in the future that may have your your damage caps on them as well as something else that you just don't really need with a rush goal because it already caps that out. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much pretty much it for rush Google. Um, so let's go back to our tier list here. Um, a rush Google, in my opinion, a rush Google, again, these are ranked. A rush Google is easy S by the way, easy S. Um, these are, these are ranked in my opinion. I do think that Hayes Felger is probably higher than a rush Google though. Um, I think a rush or sorry, Hayes Felger can kind of do not only more damage than a rush Google can, um, just overall, but Hrace Felger also, like I said in the Hrace Felger section, has the ability to go up in usefulness with bullets, where I will say Arash Google does have the use, the potential to go up in usefulness with more characters, because giving more characters double strike, um, you know, better characters in the future double strike can be beneficial. Um, but Hrace Felger, I feel like, can do more, more damage just in general. Like, for example, a good example is Hrace Felger can kill something like Bub's belly will fall in one or two turns. You're not going to do that with a fresh Google. Even even if you have a good unit to give double strike to, you're not going to be able to do that with a fresh Google. You see what I'm saying? So Hrace Velker has more options for damage. Um, and Hrace Velker also gives a bigger amount of stat stick stats than a rush Google does. So in my opinion, I think it's it's higher tier than a rush Google, but they're both s tier weapons they're both extremely good weapons a rush Google is a very good weapon for um full auto and um full auto and for uh burst you know quick burst so it's it's just a good weapon it's an s tier weapon um most people probably already saw that coming so yeah i think that's pretty much it for a rush Google. okay moving on from a rush Google, let's get into the next one um that is an s tier Next is Higarashi. Okay, let's pull up Higarashi here. Um, let's go through its pros. Um, there are, first of all, there's an okay amount of viable katana classes, especially for harder content. There's stuff like Chrysor and there's stuff like Kengo, um, which is good for this job. Um, 
Going on to its Ogi, Dodge All is pretty good. I know this from my Earth days doing, you know, Dodge Dodge All stuff in uh, Fa with Kango and uh, Christmas Anthuria. Dodge All is, is pretty good. It's pretty good buff to have. Wind Switch is extremely good for minimizing damage with things such as Draconic with wind damage reduction or Michael's at S2, which caps wind damage taken at 10k. Um, what I mean by this is on all the Primarchs on their S2, they have they have an you know addendum to that S2 where it caps the the damage that they're um, that they're strong against at 10k. And I've come to realize how powerful this can be. Actually, I will give I will give Uriel his shout outs here. <laughs> you know this isn't an Earth video, but I will give uh, Uriel his his golf clap. I have come into the realization that. The ability to water switch something in Earth and then cap that damage at 10k with Uriel's S2 is incredibly strong because I've noticed stuff like, um, you know, um, Paradise Lost in Thaw or um, Skyfall Ultimate. Uh, Ultimus? I don't know what it is. <laughs> in Ultimate Bahamut. Um, that move, that the 15% trigger in that move, um, having the boss be water and then having Uriel's buff on people and just making that potentially fatal damage get reduced all the way down to a flat 10k is incredibly strong um so having this wind switch with michael available in your element is really good um also just wind reduction in general is really good like i said with the um you know dr the draconic um which is a more prevalent weapon nowadays with the ability to use it with an opus um, is also just really good. That's really good for the for reducing damage. Um, really good. Now, um, and it lasts for 3.5 turns too, which is also really good. Um, two extra change to chain fire chambers, um, which is right here. Extra damage, free damage whenever you do chambers. Nice. Okay, good. Um, when main weapon 30% boost to fire allies charge bar gain. This is good. You know, it's just charge bar game. Good. Okay. Now, uh, cons. Lags behind Connor Shige in terms of Ogi count because it's 10% charge bar gain is on chain burst activation at the end of the turn, as opposed to an Ogi during a turn like Connor Shige. Also lacks Connor Shige's 50% boost to charge bar, uh, 50% uh, boost to MC's charge bar gain skill. So I wanted to read all that out and now I'll show you what I mean. So first of all, it can fall behind because this is kind of the Andromeda issue too, where Andromeda had the uplift issue, um, where uplift only takes, you know, it only comes into consideration at the end of the turn. Uh, Higurashi does not have any double charge attack nonsense like Andromeda does though, so you don't have to worry about voiding your, your charge bar, but it does have that, you know, uplift ish est effect um at the end at, at on your chain burst which is essentially at the end of your turn already um so you can't build charge bar when you ogie like once or twice when you're oging with mc to get your mc to charge bar more um to help out not only your mc's damage but also help out other people's damage um you don't get that that boost right you also don't get the 50% boost to MC's charge bar, um, which let me bring up um, Kanashige right here. This, when main weapon, they get the boost, 50% boost to charge bar gain here, while also having this 30% boost that uh, Higurashi has here, right? So they also get this 50% boost to MC's charge bar gain, which also helps with, and this this is the 10% the charge bar I was talking about on Ogi for Kanashige. These these two things here help Kanashige on Kengo Ogi more often during the turn as opposed to something like Higarashi, which only gets its charge bar during the turn from this and then its charge bar after the turn from this which means it will fall behind because not only is it getting less charge bar gain in general, but most of its charge bar gain is at the end of, well, not most of its charge bar. Some of its charge bar gain is at the end of the turn, um, which makes it fall behind in Ogi count. Now, another con, um, debuff, 
debuff resistance to spell cancel, which is one time, um, and the charge bar 10%, which doesn't really matter that it's one time, but this is this is one one turn, right? These two are one turn. So uh well they're not even really one turn, they're point five turns, which means it's like Ogi or it's not like Ogi, <laughs> it's like Octo's Ogi when you transcend him, where it only applies for that turn where you Ogi, right? Where or where you're not even Ogi, where you get the chain burst, right? It only applies for that turn. So if you if you Ogi one turn and then they throw out something that would get rid of this, then you know you get it for that turn, yes. But if you Ogi one turn and then don't Ogi the next, and on the second turn, that's when they throw out something that could dispel dispel you or debuff you. You don't get access to this. You see what I'm saying? So that is kind of a con as well because it only lasts for 0.5 turns. Now, um, let's go on to our addition pro and a con. The debuff buffs, which, you know, these and the wind switch and, well, wind switch less so, but dodge all, you know, stuff like this. Defensive buffs on this team, or on this weapon, um, can be overshadowed a bit by Holiday Noah. Now, who gives similar buffs, doesn't require 150 gold moons, and isn't as potentially slow as spamming Ogis with Higurashi. So... Um, Holiday Noah has come in recently past Christmas and Holiday Noah gives all these different types of, you know, debuffs, debuffs, buffs to the party, you know, all this, all this different stuff that he gives, um, which diminishes the use cases for Higurashi because what I meant by speed is when you're trying, when more people get more comfortable with the fight, they usually swap off of more defensive safe play to go for faster honors to kill the boss faster, right? So you may not want to spam Ogi, you may want to just use Noah, which is a faster character as opposed to spamming Ogi with this. The one thing that this weapon does still have over Noah though, is that it does still have this, this dodge all and the wind switch, which is very good. And that is to say, um, on the flip side, for harder content, you'll probably still want to use Higurashi and Noah together so that you can just get all those buffs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you like for for Super Ultimate Fall, I would I would expect to see people using Higurashi and Noah together, at least for the first couple weeks, just because you get all the that defense together to, to mitigate damage, which is good. Um, but as content becomes easier and people become more comfortable with the content, Higurashi will probably drop faster than Noah will because Noah, this the wind switch is good and the dodge all is good, but Noah can make up for this with his defensive buffs and his debuffs. Um, and it just doesn't require playing a katana class um, and being Ogi centric. You see what I'm saying? So. All that being said, Higurashi's rating. Higurashi goes up here um, in front of Andromeda. Um, it is good. It is good. I think it has more use cases than Andromeda um, as well. I think the wind switch is really good on this weapon. And I think this weapon is just really good for a lot of defensive fire play with Kengo or something like Chrysor. Um I think it's just a good a good weapon in general um but it is it's still pretty middle of the pack like andromeda it has its use cases but it's not something that's like super great and it kind of has the futsu issue <laughs> it's kind of funny actually <laughs> futsu gets overshadowed by ivory well not overshadowed it, get, it competes with ivory arc which is noah grand's weapon and then higurashi competes with noah holiday <laughs> so noah is just taking out gold moon weapons left and right but uh yeah it competes with holiday noah now um to do generally kind of the same things that noah does um which lowers its its use case as much um but it's still a pretty good weapon for fire hard content um so i think i'm comfortable using putting it in a a uh, middle of the pack b tier um so i think that's it for higurashi Okay, now that Higurashi is out of the way, let's go ahead and give that its rating of B. Um, from one katana to another, next we will look at Shichio. So let's pull up Shichio here. 
So, um, Shishio. Once again, I pretty much copy and pasted <laughs> the same thing from Higurashi. Um, okay amount of viable Katana classes, especially for hard content. Um, it gives a delay on Ogi, which is decent if it works. Um, and heals and charge bar gain on Ogi are all good. Um, so heals, heals right here and charge bar gain on Ogi. This also is kind of like uh, Kanashige, which is good. It's actually a little bit more than Kanashige, which is nice. Um, that's mostly it for its pros, purely pros though. Um, now let's look at cons. Um, once again, this weapon, like Higurashi, I do not have this weapon, I do not have as much, um, info about this weapon. But from what I've seen, I looked up, I did use some videos for research purposes on these weapons. From what I've seen, this can lag behind Kanashike a bit in terms of Ogi count as well, because it again lacks that 50% boost to MC's charge bar gain skill, as well as the 30% MC charge bar gain on, on Ogi that um, Higurashi and um, Kanashige both have. This one and and this one it lacks those two skills um so it does not it does not um it does not have as much that's probably why this is higher actually <laughs> because it does not have as much charge bar gain during the turn um as those other weapons which can cause cause it to fall behind in terms of ogi count um let's see uh, skill 2 buffs have to wait until the end of the turn to activate. This is another thing that I've harped on for Higurashi and Andromeda. At the end of the turn, this just needs to wait until the end of the turn <laughs> to use to get this, which makes it kind of like an uplift effect. Um, which means, again, you can't get this during the turn to boost your charge bar so that you can get more charge bar during the turn. You have to wait until the end to get these bonuses. Um, let's see. Um... Let's see. Extremely okay. Extremely minor con of one percent damage taken per turn. <laughs> Very minor. Uh, one percent is not a lot of damage per turn, but it is damage per turn that they have to take. So, uh, yeah, you you take some damage per turn. Okay. Uh, so did, let's go on to the addition, the pro and the con. First skill is extremely good, but requires the use of MC's first skill to activate, which may this is this is. <laughs> Once again, copy and paste is pretty much from Futsu. Um, maybe a skill with a long cooldown, something you don't want to use at all, or something you don't want to use right away at all times. Um, so this skill is good. This skill is very good. 30% um, charge bar gain and CA reactivation. Very good. Very good. But you have to use MC's first sought skill to get this. Which means if you're not using your first slot skill, this is completely useless to you. Um, and it also consumes 10% 10 10 of your current HP. Um, which isn't too big because you, you get HP back like every single time you Ogi. So this this should like even itself out. Um, even with the turn based damage because again this is 1%. But um, this mostly just being all restricted to your first slot skill is a restriction. So... Yeah, that's kind of it. <laughs> Honestly, um, Shishio is not a very, um, you know, advanced, like, crazy weapon. It kind of just, you know, does what it does, um, which is nice. But like I said before, it, it kind of does fall behind. Um, it kind of does fall behind. Uh, what am I trying to think of? Kanashige in terms of Ogi count and... It doesn't really do anything too crazy over Kanashige either, um, in my opinion. Um, like, it's good, but it's not, like, super crazy. Um, so, with that being said, I actually think I'm going to put Shishio probably around here. Um, the reason why is because Shishio, in my opinion, is essentially just an upgraded Kanashige with a slightly different playstyle. It's a good weapon, but like, do you really need this weapon over Kanashige? Like, you could probably, like, yes, you can argue that it has bonuses that are good that 
Konoshige does not have access to. But like, do you really need it? <laughs> do you really need it over Konoshige? But I do think the fact that it is just an upgraded Konoshige still does keep it out of something like C tier because Konoshige is just a good weapon, right? And I do think Shishio is a good weapon. But I would say that while it's above something like Andromeda, I would actually put it slightly below Higurashi, just because Higurashi does have something like the Wind Switch, the Dodge All. Um, it has more unique things. Um, the Dispel Cancel, the Debuff Resistance, stuff like that. I think it has more unique things than Shishio. Um, so I do put Higurashi above Shishio in that, that regard. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much where I put Shishio. Like I said before, it's it's kind of a basic weapon. It's kind of just Konoshige, um, slightly advanced, but also slightly a light version of it. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's Shishio. Um, pretty good weapon, but in my opinion, still kind of middle of the pack. Middle of the pack weapon. But yeah, I think that's it for Shishio. All right, Shishio is done. Let's move on. Shishio gets its B ranking. All right, boys and girls. All righty, all righty, all right. All right, it's hunting time, boys. It's hunting time. Okay, okay, okay. Hunting. Hunting. A ridiculous, a ridiculous, a ridiculous amount of sword classes to use with this, this weapon. Um, many being viable for various situations. You can use stuff like Berserker, you can use stuff like Viking, you can use stuff like Paladin, you can use stuff like Glorybringer, you can use stuff like Yamato, you can use stuff like Relic Buster, you can use all these different type of sword classes. It is very, very strong when it comes to um, job diversity for this weapon. Really good. Um, let's go ahead and bring up Hunting's page here. Um, let's see. Damage mitigation on Ogi is nice. It's just damage mitigation. It's it's free. Um, it is only 1.5 turns though, which is kind of a con. Probably should have put this in the pro and con section, but that's my addendum. <laughs> We're doing mid addendums now. <laughs> it should have probably gone in the pro and con section, right? Um, but that's good. Um, reduces turn based damage by 50% on its second skill down here, which is good because it plays into this weapon is very built around doing turn based damage to yourself and your, your party. Um, so having it reduced is good. Um, let's see, permanent, permanent double strike effect, <laughs> savage mythology. I kind of split up si savage mythology a bit, but I feel like permanent double strike effect is too much too too good to not just be a pro <laughs> it's too good to not just be a pro so um yeah it, it it's it's a pro <laughs> permanent i already talked about how arrest school was good um with giving double strike effect to everyone permanent double strike effect on mc is super freaking good um uh, super good um also something that's kind of unique to this weapon um or i guess swords in general um extremely good glory bringer awakening assassin buff right here um glory bringer can do a ridiculous amount of damage and this joint lasts for one freaking turn <laughs> which is really good um yeah yeah really 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 nice um really nice glory bringer awakening effect um okay so let's move on to the cons for this weapon um, needs some type of dot damage to activate the echo passive, which means it needs at least two turns to reach its full potential. Okay. So like I, I said before, it needs dot damage, um, to, to, it, it works around dot damage is what I said before. Um, you can get dot damage from on your party. Well, okay. Let's, let's start with just MC, just MC savage mythology gives you a permanent dot on just your mc which means every turn your mc will always get this because it will always have savage mythology until like he can die um so you always have this and then um for the rest of your team you can ogi to give them dot damage so that they can get this um you can also use um uh, Fang of the Dragon Slayer, which I've talked about many times in the past, that gives 5% damage per turn to everyone. Um, there's also bosses that give dot damage um, so that you can activate that effect. But my point being is that you cannot get this turn one because you have to take a dot damage on everyone. Everyone has to take dot damage um, 
from that turn you know to get this on the second turn which means you cannot get this on turn one um which is a con and just the fact that you need dot damage in the first place to activate it is also a con um which i pretty much summarized all this so um addition <laughs> pro and a con while the buffs on MC from Savage Mythology are extremely good, 200 250% defense up is absolutely ludicrous. This is crazy. Um, it still does cause permanent dot damage. Like I said, Savage Mythology is permanent dot damage on your MC, which means they will always be taking dot damage. And if you add in something like this, like Fang of the Dragon Slayer, this adds extra dot damage onto your MC per turn, which means you and potentially your team are constantly taking dot damage for the entire fight. It's usually negligible, but it can come into play when you get into harder and longer fights, um, especially if you're doing something like full auto where you don't just heal. You know what I'm saying? Um, that can be a play. So dot damage is good because it obviously activates this, but it is a con as well because you know you're taking free damage um which is pretty much <laughs> i like how with the earth ones i don't really have to look at the notes i just <laughs> i can kind of just talk i gotta just talk um so yeah i i pretty much i said all this <laughs> i said all this i said all this uh, without having to look at the notes so yeah it's really good it's really good one thing i will say too is that um hunting does play into this third skill a bit with the dot damage because as you go down in hp you're going to play more into this enmity which is kind of a nice third skill um it, it's just a nice third skill you know so that's good so hunting where's it gonna go boys we already know it's going to nest but where's it gonna go here where do you guys think it's gonna go i'll give you i'll give you i'll give you three seconds one two three right it's going to the front <laughs> yeah it's going to the front it's going to the front okay this may be earth bias this may be earth bias but i'll try and give you some i'll try and give you some reasons why i think this one why uh, i'll give you my my uh phoenix right ace attorney reasons why i think this this one goes to the front right first of all first of all and uh, our hunting can be used with so many more classes i already talked about it before but hunting can be used with so many different sword classes and i expect them to continue to release a ridiculous amount of sword classes because sword is just sword is a sword you know you look at like any type of like fantasy media sword is a very prolific weapon so i can see sword being used a lot in the future which means hunting will probably have more uses in the future hunting has burst potential um yes it does not have per se the same type of burst potential as something like a race Felger, but i would say it kind of matches something like an arash google um just because of the amount of burst that your mc can do with permanent double strike and like i mentioned with um glory bringers um, assassin buff that thing is ridiculous um, because like I said it lasts for an entire turn it's not just one hit like a lot of other stuff in earth it is one turn which means you're getting a massive attack boost um, for one turn also you know playing into the savage mythology boost that you're also getting from hunting by itself um, it can be used for burst setup it can be used for stuff like bar farming setups it can be used for um, longer harder fights hunting has been used in super ultimate bahamut to mash for soloing for mashing in normal rooms it's extremely good there it also was used you know and is used in hexa for the mashing setups that we use now with like berserker or chrysor um or glory bringer and it was also used at the start with things like yamato for harder you know classes that are built for harder things like yamato that is still a sword class which means you can use hunting which means like i said it's it's good for full auto it's good for burst it's good for hard content it is it can be used in all that stuff and it does not run the the turn requirements that Grace Felger and Arash Google have where i talked about in their sections they have a turn 
a turn limit, I guess, where if they cannot kill something in that amount of turns, they drop off massively. Hunting does not have that issue because hunting can keep going on, you know, various classes. So that longevity of hunting, as opposed to the other classes, uh, or the other weapons, sorry, uh, Hrace Felger and Areshkul, in my opinion, is extremely, extremely valuable. Um, I, I think, I think it's just a good, a good weapon, a good weapon, just overall, it's a very good weapon, and in my opinion, it is the most, most well-rounded. The only thing that I think hunting lacks, as opposed to the other two, is it does not have the stat sticks. The, it is not as much of a stat stick for your entire party as those other two weapons um which isn't terrible but it is a it is a con um but yeah i mean that's kind of it <laughs> and the, i guess the echo i guess the echo not being able to be used its full potential on turn one is also a con um that's true and it also is kind of restrictive in terms of bursts where um, a Reshkigal, for example, as long as you're using an Axe class, it can get access to its S3. Hrace uh, Felger, as long as you are using a gun class, it can, for the most part, use its burst potential. Um, Hunting's main burst potential is based around Glorybringer at, the po at, at this point in time. Because Glorybringer has that huge assassin buff on it. So you're kind of locked to Glorybringer when it comes to burst, but I still think that Hunting, in my opinion, is the most well-rounded of the three S tiers. Also, Earth bias, obviously. Um, but because of that, and because of the reasons I've laid out, I think it is at the top of S tier. I think it is the best Gold Moon weapon, in my opinion. Um, whoops, spoilers, <laughs> spoilers, spoilers. Um, but yeah, I think it's the best. I think it's the best. Hunting is really really freaking good um okay one one other con this is the earth main coming out of course this one's gonna get more more than all the other weapons one other con to hunting as well i've talked about this multiple people have asked me questions about this one other con to hunting is that i do think that hunting can fall off in um magna or just came grids in general because you kind of want a good solid galleon grid base to use with your hunting um to really get the good benefits out of it and to be able to use it in that harder content where you know against something like hexa you're probably not going to want to use a magna earth build so even if you have hunting its usefulness falls off if you can't really play into it as much as a galleon grid can can play into it but i will say even then for came stuff whether it's magna or primal hunting can still very much play into full auto setups and burst setups you can still use it for that stuff it may not do as much damage to the galleon grid but you can still use it for those setups which is still good so while it can't extend as much if you do not have a galleon grid it is still good regardless in my opinion for those lesser things um and before people ask i still don't think i would recommend it for a galleon or a non-galleon grid or a cam grid just in general magna or primal but if you do buy it you will get a boost you will get a boost it is like these weapons where if you have all your stuff for Hrace Felker even in Magna you will get a boost even a, a Rush Ghoul in Magna you will get a boost you just may not be able to fully utilize it like a Galleon Grid can so that's my that's my case I, I've said it <laughs> you know and I did it my way you know I did it my way um, that's that's what I think for Hunting, right? I think it is the best gold moon weapon. Earth bias. <laughs> Earth bias. Okay. But that's all I have for hunting. Okay. Now that hunting is out of the way, let us go to the next weapon. So that gets an S. Um so the next one is Bra Rom Romfaya? Romfaya? I I think. Romfaya. Um the wind spear. Okay. So for this weapon. Let us go through its pros. Um, decent amount of spear classes. I said this for uh, Blazing Mistral uh, as well, but not the best. 15% bonus wind damage on Ogi is good. As far as I can tell, there are not 
very many other weapons that do this for wind like how light has ivory arc um so this is good that i know of it's not really competing with anything um the crit rate and keen is all right um this is all right um uh let's see what else uh permanent guaranteed triples is incredibly strong right here this is really good i talked about how guaranteed triples were good for your mc on um a rescue after ogi this is guaranteed permanent triple tags that is very strong <laughs> that is very strong um being able to guarantee the more and more i play this game being able to guarantee triple attacks is incredibly strong um uh, very good very good um permanent flurry as well like chris felger um this is this is also very good this is very good just more damage more hits um you know very very nice very nice um that's it for the pros let's go on to the cons um 30 35 percent hit to charge bar gain um su not super egregious but does make it a, a bit harder to get these ogi buffs um like i said not super egregious um you know it's not 200 percent like a rash google but it does make it harder to get these but this is also like an auto attack i would i would argue this is actually kind of better because not only is it not 200 percent but this this weapon is more auto attack focused than ca focused like a rash google is so this kind of matters even less so you get more access to your ogi and this matters less in the first place so that's pretty good um even though it's a con it's <laughs> it's it's just not that big of a con um now addition um pro and a con all allies totaled do need to hit 40 40 times to the current target to gain the assassin buff um so right here this is this is um what i mean when i say that you do need 40 hits on the current target i do not know if this actually matters for multiple target things so like if you hit like fall and his wing um i don't know what it counts as the current target um i i guess it means whatever you hit, whatever you targeted at first so like if you targeted the body but then some of your hits hit the wing um i guess it would only count what you guys what your allies hit to the body for that 40 hit um, I guess that's what it means by that. Um, so, yeah, that's one thing for the assassin buff. But also, like um, some of the other weapons I've talked about, this shouldn't be too hard since um, it gives the flurry. Um, but this is this is a restriction. What I what I meant to say was with, with some of the other weapons I've talked about, um, you can't you can't get this until the end of the turn um you can't get this until you do these 40 hits which means you need at least turn two in order to do this um and then going back to this this shouldn't be too hard because of the flurry um that you get on this plus you have characters like um you know vampy and vampy and narmaya and valentine's grimnir that all have a lot of hits um but it is still a restriction in general um that's kind of it though <laughs> that's kind of it that's kind of it which is good and bad um there's not a lot going on with this weapon but it doesn't really have that many cons to be honest um it's not a huge stat stick but it kind of just does what it does it kind of just does what it does it's an auto attack weapon and i know a lot of people a lot of wind mains hopped on this really fast when it comes to stuff like guild war um they really tried to make use of this weapon i've seen it used in um stuff like hexa or uh super ultimate bahamut as well um and just burst setups in general um it's just kind of like a it's a good weapon it's a good weapon with not a lot of cons um it kind of just like i said does what it does and it does it decently well um so going to this weapon i'm actually this is going to be the first a tier weapon in my opinion um i think it's pretty good i think it's pretty good i think as a wind main you would probably want this weapon you'd probably want this weapon for just general full auto stuff um you know access to burst stuff y you could probably play around with stuff like like i said like in hexa or super ultimate bahamut just mashing on stuff um you know it i think it would be a pretty fun weapon to have as a wind main even if you don't main wind you may if you like wind you may want this weapon i think it's pretty good i think it's a little bit better than some of these because like i said it doesn't really have any 
um, massive restrictions besides the assassin that you need to wait a turn for. But I mean, I put hunting at the front of S, so that you know the the waiting a turn thing doesn't really affect me personally. Um, I mean, obviously it affects me, but it's not enough to really drop it down a tier in my opinion. Um, I think it's just a good weapon. I think it's a good weapon. It doesn't have a lot going on, but it doesn't have a lot of cons going on either. Um, pretty good. Pretty good weapon. A tier for uh, rum fire. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I have to say about this weapon. Pretty quick one. Okay, we are getting down to the wire here. Uh, there are only two left, so let's see. Uh, well, let's give Ron Fai its, its ranking, um, and then let's go on to the next one, which is Golden Fist of Ura. <laughs> and you may see something kind of funny here already. Um, but okay, so let's go to Ura. This is another weapon that I have, um, so I can talk a little bit more on this. Um, so let's let's start off with the pros relatively good amount of viable fish jobs um you have monk which is a pretty good job just in general you have um rune slayer actually rune slayer is a very good job um that you can use for stuff like mashing on um uh mashing on uh what i'm trying to think of super old muhammad um and then obviously luchador which you use for burst but you can also bring luchador um people do ura luchador in hexa as well um you know they're viable fish jobs for this weapon um so that's good um on ogi um it it has armor which is good and plays into its getting hit and the counter-attacking nature um which is nice um it also has amplify all allies normal attack damage by 30 percent um right here which is good good that's pretty much it for the main pros um, that are just purely pros. Uh, now cons, as you can see, I have question mark, question mark, question mark here, just like I did for Futsu, which is funny because they're both light. Um, the one thing that I could say for a con for this is that it does not, it does have the stat stick of the amplifying the normal attack damage that Arrest and Hracefelger do but it does not have the normal attack damage cap and it does ha not have normal attack damage cap and it does not have supplemental damage cap uh, or supplemental damage sorry on it um so that is kind of a con as well because it just doesn't have those like the other ones that have these stat stick boosts on them do the main thing with this weapon kind of like futsu which is again funny because they're both light weapons um most of this is going to be in the addition and uh the addition pro and con section so first counter is very powerful but is restricted to just mc being hit so if mc doesn't get hit for whatever reason the counters are unavailable so the entire first skill of this weapon is full first counter for three hits um when you get hit right which is good this is this is a good skill it does a lot of damage too it does a lot of damage but you have to get hit so if you do not get hit whether you have someone else on your team subbing for you or you just don't get hit you know sometimes an enemy just doesn't hit your mc um or if your mc dodges or it misses or anything like that um you do not get access to the skill so this skill is completely useless there's nothing else on the skill besides the full force counter um which is kind of bad um substitute on ogi may or may not be good depending on if you want your mc to take damage or not um also the only way to have your mc take guaranteed damage to the weapon itself so like i kind of said before you do not have really any guaranteed way to make the boss hit you unless they are you know um you know like they hit all allies or something like that or you use the substitute um or you use like a skill that made you know a character take damage or extra aggro or something like that um there, there's no other other real way to make the enemy hit you with only this weapon alone besides the substitute which can also be kind of a double-edged sword because you can get into situations where you don't want your mc to get hit um, or you just don't want to ogi, right? Um, so you may not get access to this skill either. This substitute to get your full force counter, um, which is kind of a pro and a con. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's see, what else do I have? Um, all allies lose 40% of their max HP on 
uh, battle start, which doesn't matter too much with burst since Mugen and Nihon still work and will condense your HP regardless, but can matter for things such as entry damage triggers or when not planning to burst. So I can actually talk on this because this, this came up for me recently. <laughs> um, so for one thing, Mugen and Nihon, they will, um, they're not based off of your um, current HP, they're, they're based off of like your max HP when they take your stuff down, like when they take your condenser HP, so it doesn't actually matter. Um, it also doesn't really play into like an enmity effect because since they condense your max HP down, a lot of times you'll start at like half HP here or even red HP, but then when they condense your HP down, since you have lower overall HP, you then turn into being green anyway because you're not really half HP anymore. Um, if that makes any sense whatsoever. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's how Mugen and Nihon work. So that's not really a big issue. Um, the one thing I will say though is the one thing I was going to talk on is this entry damage trigger thing where recently um, I have I have noticed that um, I have noticed that when I try to, you know, a big a big topic right now is is trying to get optimal setups to do fa high level because everyone's trying to get their opuses upgraded. Right. So they need fall mats. So one thing I want to use was I want to use Ura with my light because I have it. Um, because I didn't want to use fire because fire setup kind of hits the wing and I didn't want to hit the wing because that makes it so that you get the, the, the buff on fall where if people die, then it, it leads to the end. So I wanted to just do body specific setups, um, hitting only the body, not the wing. But the issue with one of the issues with Ura is that when you take that 40% damage cut at the start, a lot of your allies will straight up just die to like Faw's entry trigger at that point. Because they're at that point, 40% of their max HP in a burst setup grid, you're just, you know, a lot of characters are just going to die. You know, like, um, the only ones that would really live were like Mugen and MC because they have like a, a guts effect from battle start. But that's an issue. You know, so it's, it's like, yes, the 40% the is kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of whatever for the most part. Um, but it can be a con in certain situations like that. Um, and when not planning to burst. So you can use this, you can also use this on something like, um, you know, Rune Slayer to mash, or you can use it on something, um, like, uh, what am I trying to think? A monk, right? For like full auto. You may want to use this for those jobs, but you're going into whatever you're full autoing with a 40% damage cut off the bat. You know what I'm saying? So you're already at a disadvantage in terms of health when you're coming into a fight like that because you just have to take that damage cut. Um, so that is a is I mean it's kind of more a con than a pro, honestly, um, because you just you just take it and there's not really a benefit for taking it um, unless you're trying to play into an MD setup. Now, if you're trying to play in an MD setup, that is kind of where it becomes a pro. So I guess I kind of. <laughs> I kind of instinctually put it in the pro and con section because I had that in the back of my my psyche, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that that is one place where it could be potentially kind of a pro. Um, let's see what else. Um, does it need normal attack damage implication from outside sources? Um, besides the overcap changes, I talked about this before in um, Arash Ghoul and Hreisvelger. Um, it doesn't need these because it's already capped on the amplification. Um, so you don't need those weapons, but again, like I said, with those, you could potentially lose out on, um, you could potentially lose out on those, um, those, uh, benefits of those extra weapons if they had other benefits, um, in addition to their, their overcap, uh, sections of them. So you may lose out on that by trying to use it with. Uh, or not using it with Ura. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for Ura. So let's go to the ranking for this. Where shall Ura go? Um, Ura, in my opinion, from my usage, in my opinion, I think it's actually an A before or above Romphaya. I think these are kind of interchangeable, kind of, now that I've looked at them. Um, I feel like I kind of have slight 
Ura bias because I have this one and I've used this one, but I will say I have seen Ura in more things like I've seen more uses of Ura in Hexa, I've seen more uses of Ura in Super Old and Bahamut, I've seen more uses of Ura for um, just general light burst, I've seen more uses of Ura for um, things like gold bar farming than I have Ron Fire. Um, that may just be because more people have bought Ura than Romphia? I don't know. Maybe the, the light community is more vocal than the wind community. I don't know. But that's just what I've seen. And obviously, like I said, my own light bias because I have this weapon. Um, I would put it slightly above Romphia just because I do see more use cases. More use cases for it at the moment. Um, and I have it from, you know, the past. So, that's how I feel about Ura. Um... I think that's pretty much all I have to say about that weapon. Um, solid A tier, in my opinion, weapon. Pretty good. Pretty good weapon. Um, you can use it in a decent amount of stuff. Um, even stuff that you don't really think you would use it in, like Hexa. <laughs> so, yeah. Decent weapon. Decent weapon. A tier. Okay. And then there was one. We are finally at Zosimos. I think I've been recording for like three hours. <laughs> All right, let's give let's give Ura uh, it's it's a tier. This is this is the reason why I said in my comment this I knew this was gonna be a doozy and I needed some time to research all of these and you know go through all this stuff. But you know I do it I do it do it for the vine, bro. Do it for the vine. Um, but yeah, you know I do it for fun and it, it was pretty good because I am kind of getting um. I am kind of I'll talk about this at the end. Let me let me get to Zosimos. Okay, so Zosimos. Um. Uh, Zosimos pros. Okay, let's go to Zosimos. Um, pros. All right amount of staff classes. Mana Diver being the pack leader. Um, staff classes, you have like, you have like, I guess technically Sage, Mana Diver, um, Warlock. Mana Diver and Warlock are the two big ones. Mostly Mana Diver. Mana Diver is an incredibly strong job just in general. And then you also pack Ouroboros on top of that. It's very, very good. Um, so it does have ups in, in that regard. Um, Mana Diver is really good. Um, one turn cut to MC skill cooldowns and up to five hits of damage based on crests on Ogi is good. Um, so this right here, I talked about before how I like... Um, turn cut cooldowns on um i mean this is only on mc but i liked it you know i i liked it from yatama i like it on um uh blazing mistral as well i like this this thing i think cutting your cooldowns is good um so that's good that's kind of it for the the main pros <laughs> for just the pros okay so let's go to the cons um mostly everything on this weapon is locked behind crest or Oging, which kind of freaking sucks, um, because I think it does have a lot of good stuff, but it's all locked behind Cress or Oging. Um, also, one one con to this weapon that is much more of a con on this weapon as opposed to the other weapons in its type. We have now gone through all the other ones, so you kind of know where I'm getting at. This weapon lacks a boostable mod for its third skill, so it does not have. It does not have a boostable mod here, like, um, I'll once again go to another weapon, like, Ura has this, this boostable mod. It does not have a boostable mod on its third skill, and, um, and the issue with this is it also does not have any of the stat stick bonuses that things like Race Felger or Ereshkigal have to make up for the fact that it does not have a third stat stick like it, it does not have a third mod sorry it does not have a stat stick to make up for the lack of no mod which kind of shaking sucks as well um and this this i'll, I'll get into this in the next section i'll get in the, in the next section but yeah that that in my opinion is a very big con because this third skill is just very lackluster compared to a lot of the other weapons um just having no mod and having no stat stick component to the the uh, weapon in general is very big con. Um, okay, so the addition pro and con section. Um, skill one gives crest to to get the weapon moving, even on jobs that don't produce their own crest naturally, and the <laughs> and the buffs <laughs> that can be gained from the skill are pretty decent and can all be gotten at max crest, but it requires three skills from specific 
specifically MC in order to activate so the downtime may be high and take time to ramp up depending on crest provided by the party Whew, that was a long one <laughs> that was a long one so pretty much what I'm saying in this one is first of all this gives a crest right this gives a crest to all um, allies so this is kind of good because even if you use a job that does not give crest naturally like mana diver if you were to use a job like sage for example sage does not give crest naturally so you can still get crest naturally with this skill which is nice but it is restricted to only using three skills on mc specifically mc has to use skills specifically to get this um to, to utilize this it's not everybody not everybody can play into this which kind of sucks um let's see what else did i have um okay the buffs that you get from the skill are down here which are all pretty decent um they're, they're i mean mirror image is kind of whatever but <laughs> the rest of these are pretty decent and once you're max crest you will get access to all of these once it activates which is good but again that is based on this three skill thing and if you notice from the other weapons that i I talk about this one is kind of less restrictive because you will almost certainly use three skills on your MC throughout the fight even if you don't want even if you didn't want to use your first skill you will use like the other three or the other two or something like that um, which is good but the downtime on this could be very drastic because you have to wait for three skills to repeatedly come back up on MC right to use this um, so it may take time um, to ramp up depending on how many crests you get from the party um, skill 2 is okay for the extra damage but does need at least one crest to activate in the first place and five to activate twice so what I'm talking about here is this skill right here um, you know when you have one oblivion crest which means you need one oblivion crest which means you kind of need to do something where like kind of some mana diver stuff now has to get Ouroboros you would use like the crest summon as your main summon just to get a crest at the start you would need to use this use that to get this at the start as well because you need one oblivion crest or you would have to use a skill or something um to get this at the start and you need five which is not going to be easy with one button <laughs> or no buttons <laughs> it's practically impossible um to get it to activate twice which is not not good either also i think um one thing i passed over actually um i talked about the one turn this is going all the way back up to pros um uh, i noticed it when i talked about the skill damage this is also good um that getting more um just extra hits on your ogi based on your oblivion crest um up to five hits is also really good um this was a pro um i forgot about that um i didn't read that in my notes but yes that's that's a pro um anyway back to what we were talking about so after skill two um yeah so you need a crest to activate this skill two and you need up to five to activate it twice which kind of sucks for just getting an extra nuke <laughs> you know it kind of sucks um and then let's see um and then the heal and crest gain from skill three is nice but requires chambers activation to be useful so this right here this is okay the the healing is okay and everyone gets a crest which is good um but it needs to be specifically chambers and you have to chambers which means you're gonna have to ogi um which means you don't just get this which means also if you're not ogying um you just don't get this at all if you're just planning to do a burst setup or like a full auto setup that does not ogi you will just never get this you will never get this which sucks like triple down <laughs> when you remember again like we said this does not have a mod on it and it this weapon does not have any type of stat stick um bonuses to it so this if you're not ogying you practically only have two skills <laughs> which kind of sucks <laughs> so like this this weapon has a lot of potential but it is also it's another weapon that's very gated by you know it's kit it, it's very gated um so for zosimos let's go to our tier list um i'm actually gonna put zosimos in my opinion I think it's actually B tier and it's slightly above Andromeda. Um, 
the reason why I think so is because like I said I think it has potential a lot of the stuff in here is good the crests are good the skill damage is good the nukes are good the the, the MC skill cooldowns are good um, the buffs in here are good um, you know healing and extra crust is good um, and while it's not as restrictive as something like Mercy Lago, a lot of the stuff the that's in here you will probably get just by playing anyway but it is still a, re a restrictive kit in my opinion um but the kit does have bonuses but i think honestly the biggest thing that is the the biggest knock to this is the fact that is the fact that um this skill can be completely freaking useless um but i will say this is probably the least important thing of the entire kit is in this third skill so even though this one can be kind of completely useless it's also kind of just ignorable in general so it kind of give and take there so i think it's kind of b tier slightly above andromeda honestly i would put it below andromeda if andromeda did not have the whole ogi thing going on with the 101 percent charge bar to 199 percent charge bar because that's just whack um but yeah that that's just not like yeah I, I think it's slightly above andromeda so this i think is my finish list i think this is my finish list i don't really have anything else to give you honestly i don't really have any extra denim or anything i i think i pretty much said because i i know padded <laughs> i know padded everything <laughs> so yeah uh pretty good here and i will give zosimos it's it's b rank to finish it off and then save off my save my document but yeah i think that's pretty much it for this um so like i was saying before the zosimos i didn't want to ramble too much during zosimos section just get it over with you know what i'm saying then i can come back to this but um even though people requested this and i knew this this <laughs> i knew this this was going to take me a long time um and a lot of effort to to <laughs> to go through and note note all this stuff down um it's kind of good for me too because a lot of these weapons um ramfaya shishio kind of higurashi zosimos um futu futsu um blazing mistral kind of i kind of knew about blazing mistral mercy alago a lot of these weapons i didn't really know about to be honest um like i kind of generally knew what they did but i didn't really knew know like their full extent um even just looking over the wiki a couple times um i didn't really know their full extent um of power and cons like like i said Fu futsu i used to think was probably like a, a b at least a b tier i i thought it was a b tier but then when i looked at it, i'm like this is kind of a c tier because uh you know what i talked about um but yeah so it was it was good for me because i'm coming up on the point where uh <laughs> i'll actually show you um hello my colleague Elstro. um I'll, I'll go in here and show you my my gold moons i'm actually getting pretty close to two <laughs> to two i think i'm probably going to get a rush google next which also leads into um my next video idea um i actually i think i'm gonna try and talk about the next thing i'm gonna talk about is i'm going to kind of talk about the thought process into um going going primal in an element um because i've been talking about for a while how i'm thinking about going dark primal and i kind of wanted to to outline my steps into how i how i think about going primal in an element because dark will be my fourth primal element i'm primal in earth light and fire already so dark will be my my fourth so i'm kind of experienced in how i go into my thought process on you know going primal and um making good decisions for what you bar and what you roll for when going for primal and when to roll when going for primal so i think i thought that would be a kind of a good you know talking video to go through um to kind of show you my thought process of how i'm going through for um getting ready to go dark primal all that's to say um i'm thinking about going uh i'm, I'm thinking about getting new weapons new golden weapons and the rush google is at the top of my list next um because i don't have it yet um so that's probably the next gold moon weapon i i go for so learning about these gold moon weapons was beneficial to me as well because now i kind of have a better idea of what i want on my account um which is good so yeah but 
I hope this was beneficial to you. I hope this was uh, this was an interesting watch and listen. Um, I hope you got some information on the Goldman weapons because I tried to break them down. Um, you know, based on my research and what I've used, and what I've seen other people talk about, and what they've used. Um, so I just hope it was you know uh, good for information. <laughs> I hope it was good for information and my boy Luca, I can't believe bro you cursed me with this mess. You cursed me with this like three hour cheeking, four hour <laughs> planning process. I think I spent like two hours taking down my notes too. Oh good lord. Uh but yeah, you know, like I said, it was useful for me too, so you know, I'm just messing around. But yeah. So I, I hope this was good. I hope this was beneficial and um until the next time. I uh, will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support as always. And uh, bye-bye.